Yes, everybody, welcome back to TarHillIllustrated.com. Or, of course, if you are watching on our YouTube channel, that is Tar Heel Illustrated. I'm THI staff writer Jacob Turner. And joining me, as he always does for a podcast, our very own publisher, Andrew Jones. And, AJ, we're here to talk some UNC basketball, a little weekly look ahead to Carolina's two games this week. We'll dive into that here shortly. But before we do so, I want to blast a couple of things we've got going on right now can sign up for a year-long premium membership at TarHillIllustrated.com, link in the description below, for just $20.21 2021. That's less than a candy bar a month. I mean, just think about you know, buying us a, a Hershey bar for, for the work we do over here. It's a great time to do it with everything going on, football, basketball, recruiting, all that stuff, 365 days a year. Great time to sign up, get that for a whole year for just $20.21. Like I said, link in the description below to head over there and sign up. That ends on Friday, so take advantage before time runs out. Also, I want to blast the sponsorship that we've got for this podcast. We are sponsored by Rogue Apothecary, specializing in top-shelf family-grown hemp products, You know whether it's CBD, Delta 8, whether you want that tincture, oil form, uh, flower form, gummy form, whatever it may be, Rogue Apothecary has you covered. I actually grow their hemp products out in Oregon in a farm, so you know, we're talking coast to coast on what they do, but they have fantastic products. AJ's actually used some of their products. I'm hoping to get my hands on on some as well here very soon, but I know AJ can attest to, to some of the CBD products he's been using to help. The oils, yeah, because I, because I have trouble sleeping and uh, especially this time of year because my mind's racing. I can't shut off. Mm. I have a terrible time shutting off. Yeah, I do and, after games um, as well, yeah. You know, I, I will often, I'll go to bed and I'll have my phone and I'll send myself emails I'm planning the next day. It's That's like 1.45 right? in the morning. My wife's at work and I'm texting her saying, I can't sleep again. Well, she is a nurse and she convinced me to try the oils. I got a little sample package uh, that Richard sent me and uh, I talked to her a lot about it because I'm not a guy who just jumps into anything. Yeah, yeah. And she said, go ahead and try it. And the oil definitely works. I mean, it's it works. Yeah. It, and I'm not going to promote. And I did talk to Richard about that when he said, you know, would like you to do a read on the air, but I want you to try the product because I'm not going to promote that like Kramer when he had that vegetable juice, whatever on Seinfeld, that mm -hmm. green stuff, and he couldn't mm -hmm. do the commercial because it tastes so terrible. So bad, yeah. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be that guy. I just, that, that's not my style. Mm -hmm. So I haven't tried a lot of the other products. I've talked to people who have, I have tried the oil and, and it works. So if it works for me, then, I'm sure that a lot of other people out there that have a similar kind of issue oh, yeah. might work for them as well. Yeah, most definitely. Like I said, you can find, we'll, I'll throw that link to their website in the description below. You can head over and yeah. check them out. Rogue Apothecary, great stuff, great products, a lot of different variety as well. So, you know, I think there's anything, it, whatever your needs are, kind of whatever you're looking for, it seems like they have a little bit of everything and, and they can definitely match your needs on that. So check them out. Shout out to Rogue Apothecary for sponsoring this podcast. AJ, let's dive into basketball though, man. Like I said, this is the weekly kind of look ahead podcast that we're going to be trying to roll out. Um, you know, looking ahead at some some of Carolina's games and what they're facing going into this week. Obviously, the Tar Heels coming off a, a bit of a bot, not a bye week, but a bit of a you know, over a week long gap in terms of between last when they played and when they're suiting up to play number twenty Michigan on Wednesday in the ACC Big Ten Challenge in Chapel Hill as a nine fifteen p.m. tip off. And then obviously on Sunday, opening ACC play at Georgia Tech. AJ will be at both of those games. Obviously, um, big week for the Tar Heels. Tough opponents sitting at four and two right now. Um, 0 and 2 against ranked teams so far this season. So, you know, that Michigan game in particular would be a good opportunity for Carolina to pick up a win against a really solid opponent. Um, AJ, there's a lot to talk about. We've obviously had a bit of a gap in between the last time the Tar Heels played, picking up a, a relatively easy win over UNC Asheville. I don't think they played great, but, you know, UNC Asheville couldn't, couldn't shoot to save their life that game. So that definitely helped them out a little bit. Um, so, a lot to kind of talk about and kind of preview ahead of this week's games. Before we dive into kind of the individual matchups, what's kind of your thoughts about where this Carolina basketball team is right now? Because I think that week of practice, it was a lot that I think they needed to work on. Hubert Davis alluded to that as well. It wasn't really hard to see that. It'll be interesting to see how the Tar Heels look, particularly on the defensive side of the ball, going up against Michigan with that big gap in between games. There was a lot of chatter about what, didn't work well against Charleston, Purdue, Tennessee, and Asheville. Now, people need to remember that they played four games in eight days. And one of them was in South Carolina, two of them were Connecticut, and one of them was in Chapel Hill. So factor in travel, factor in four games in eight days, factor in every, every week, the NCAA mandates you take a day off. There wasn't a lot of time to work on a lot of the things that were kind of disheveled or just not good, like the defense was terrible hmm. uh, against Tennessee. 
and it wasn't very good against Purdue. So they didn't have a lot of time to fix those things or tweak a few things or refine whatever it is they want to refine. Maybe Hubert's message for what he wants with defense, with dropping and coverage and icing and all those things. They needed to get a bunch of games for the kids to see on film what parts of it works, what parts of it doesn't work, and then apply that in a practice scenario, which is a classroom uh, format, especially when you have this kind of a break. So they had an opportunity to do that. So we'll see if they're better. It's a challenge Tuesday night against uh, Michigan because Michigan can score, has a guard that could score, and they got a big who is at times unstoppable who can score. So it's going to challenge all the nuances of the way Hubert wants to play defense, which I think is great because hmm. I'm all about learning, learning about this team, learning about this program, learning about these players, and seeing if they can morph into the kinds of players and hence the kind of team that Hubert says that he sees them becoming, believes that they are. So that's what this past week was about. And also I thought it was kind of interesting. Hubert said they need to spend time together just to be together. They're going to have Thanksgiving together. I don't, I don't know if they did so at Hubert's house or not. I believe yeah, they didn't did. see much about that. No. Yeah. But I, I, he said, you know, we just got to get to, be, I would imagine the Brady Manic interview after UNC Asheville was a, was a conversation piece, and Brady probably had an opportunity. And I don't know this for sure, so don't take it that Great way. Interview, by the way, we'll let you. Probably had an opportunity to speak to the team, and I, I think you know what, someone need to say those things. And yeah. and if you're Brady Manic, I thought it was fantastic. I love it was refreshing. I thought you know, it in the media, wanted. in the media, we don't want BS. We want total honesty really? because it for is. me, I, it means I know more. I want to know as much as I possibly can. So when I write stories articles, when I write perspective, when I offer perspective in videos like this, I know more about what I'm talking about. I do a better service to those who are our, our customers, so to speak, our, our, our clients, so to speak. So Brady was fantastic. And I, my take on that was, hey, guys, I, I, I was in Oklahoma. That's a pretty good program. I came here. This is like the Taj Mahal of basketball. Right. This is the program to a lot yeah. of people. It is a lot of that Kentucky. Yeah. You know, we had, I played with one McDonald's all American my whole time in Oklahoma. There's four on this team right here. Uh, he basically said, this is crap. Yeah, we need to be enough, better yeah. at A, B, C, D, E, and F. Mm -hmm. And and he didn't push away any of the responsibility. He said, he took a lot of it on himself. And, yeah. and in the last two games, I think he's had eight, and nine rebounds. Eight, three of the last four, he's had eight, eight, and nine, I believe. Uh, so, you know, he's written it up a little bit. I, the thing that's most impressed me about him, to be honest with you, is he's a more rugged player or certainly has been at North Carolina, a more rugged player than either he was at Oklahoma or that I thought he was at Oklahoma. And a lot of that was based off talking to Oklahoma media that covered him for four years. So if it means that Brady Manick has to step up and be this team's vocal leader because he's investing one year of his life into this special place, but he wants to get the most out of it, then maybe that's the greatest development to come out of UNC Asheville and perhaps this past week. Maybe that message resonated uh, and, and, and the, the team has, has taken some steps forward as a result. So far through six games, not very impressive. Uh, some things are offensively. I like the way Hubert's rotating the bigs. I like the fact that Hubert senses matchup stuff and he'll call plays for guys. That's something that's new and different. He's done it for Manic, or excuse me, he's done it for Garcia. He did it for Walton a few times at Charleston, and that was key in winning that game. There are people down on Hubert. Oh, yeah. Right now. Yeah. And Hubert making some of those calls and leaving the ball in Caleb Love's hands late. It's why they won that game. Yeah. So I think he does. We're, we're in a period right now covering UNC athletics where the negative is the role, man. Everyone's hopping on a negative vibe, and they're wearing that out big time. But there are some positives, and I think the way that they have done a lot of things offensively, I think Hubert's vision for the offense is very sound. Uh, I believe that we'll see more things incorporated. We talked about this just a few weeks ago, Jacob. I said early in the year, you know, Hubert's going to do something. People think he's the greatest. Then he's going to do something. People think he's the worst. And you just got to let this stuff play out, man. It's been six games. You got a lot of newness, including the head coach, you know, including how he talks to us in the media. I don't think Caleb Love is the best defensive point guard in America. I don't think Dawson Garcia is the best defensive big man in America. Yeah. Caleb Love's not going to lead the ACC to assist when you pull him off the ball so much in Connecticut like he did. So there's a lot of things to learn. There's a lot of things for Hubert to learn. But six games in – 
there's a lot of clubs out there struggling, including the one they play Tuesday night. They've had a similar season so far. Yeah, most definitely. And it, it's been an interesting year for Michigan, just kind of looking at how how they've performed so far this season, sitting at four and two. Like I said, twenty no, ranked number twenty in the country right now. Losses coming to Seton Hall, pretty he's a good good club. Make no, make no mistakes about it. Two point loss to them, and then lost to Arizona uh, by eighteen as well. So two losses in there. Besides that, I mean, not really super impressive wins. You know, Buffalo Prairie View, uh, UNLV, and it looks like Texas Arlington. So you know, not like they. No, I think no, Carol- no, it's- Tar- was Tarleton State. Oh, Tarleton State. Excuse me. I saw the, I saw the TAR uh, abbreviation. I assume it would be. Yeah, Tarleton. Billy. If everybody remembers Billy Gillespie, who had the disaster, he built Texas A and M, and they had mm-hmm. a disastrous stint at Kentucky. Billy Gillespie is the head coach there. Interesting. And that was an eleven point game. It was a battle. Yeah, it's close. Game. Michigan had they, they only beat Buffalo by twelve. Buffalo's an okay team. Mm-hmm. Uh, per review by 28, which is probably comparable to the UNC Asheville type yep. thing. Yep. Uh, they lost at home to Seton Hall, beat Vegas by 13. Vegas ain't any good right now. They're in a down period. They got blown out of Arizona, and they struggled against Tarleton State. I would argue that their results are comparable to Carolina's. Yeah. Yet Carolina was, was competitive with Purdue on a neutral site. Mm-hmm. And Purdue's a lot better than Seton Hall. So not that it really matters, but Michigan, I would think, has a similar vibe around it right now and concerns from the fans that Carolina fans have, which makes this a really interesting game. They haven't played. Well, they played a few days ago. Carolina has been off for about a week by the time they get into that game. So I think this is a really good test for Carolina to see how much it's grown, see what areas it's improved in. And Jacob, they got to get a good win. Mm -hmm. The loss against Tennessee really put them in a bad spot because I know that it's the end of November, but when you only have four real quality non-conference games and the ACC looks down again, I mean, there's some teams on the in the ACC that are just awful. Yeah, oh yeah. So you don't want to have to get into the league and try to play your way into the tournament or to enhance your seed in the tournament simply through league play. You want to you want to get some stuff outside the league and right mm-hmm. now they have four opportunities and they've lost two of them. Yeah. This is the third one. The next one's in a few weeks, UCLA and Vegas. That's a huge task. Tough team. So yeah. th- they got to win this game. I, oh, think, okay. I, I think it's a must win in a lot of ways. They need to feel good. This is a tough week, but it's a doable week. Mm-hmm. They could be four and four at the end of this week, losing to two teams that are okay. Michigan's pretty good. I think they're better than their record. They will show that in time. Don't really know about Georgia Tech yet. I uh, got a couple of nice players from last year's team that are playing well, but it's a week Carolina could finish four and four. They could be six and two. Yeah. And if we think people are concerned right now, imagine what it's like after four, if they're four and four. Oof. Oof. You, know, you get a chance to go there, get a road win, start the league, and then you can breathe easy. Okay, we got a couple wins. You know, Michigan is a resume helper because hmm. I think they're going to get better and better and better with a lot of games in the Big Ten, which will help Carolina. And then oh, yeah. they can improve, and by the time they get to UCLA, hey, pretty confident bunch. Yeah, no, I think it's a huge week for the Orioles. I agree with you. I think, I think it's it's two games that Carolina can win very feasibly. To me, got Michigan at home. I think that's up in in in, our, in Michigan. It's a little bit more. It's a little bit trickier of a game, obviously, because <laughs> yeah. of that environment and where they play. But I think the fact that it's in Chapel Hill, it's a Michigan team that really hasn't beaten anybody great this year. It's similar for the Tar Heels. Um, but it's a Michigan team that I think is there for the taking that Carolina, you know, I think should beat Michigan when they come down here. But it's going to be a tough task for them, no doubt. And then switching the focus to Georgia Tech, not a great team either. I think still kind of up in there in terms of what kind of year they're going to have. And they lost some really important kind of key guys from last year's team as well. Um, but at Georgia Tech's a tough place. Carolina struggled there in, in, the, in the past few years. I mean, Sunday, Sunday evening, I mean, excuse me, Sunday afternoon game, weekend game. I expect there to be a pretty good crowd in there as well. So I think Maybe. it's a tough week for the Tar Heels, but I think it's a week that Carolina very easily could walk away from 2-0. and I think, unfortunately, for the Tar Heels and where they're at right now and for the fan base, you could see it kind of flipping the other way where if Carolina walks away 1-1 or 0-2, would you really be that surprised based on kind of what we've seen over the last few weeks in particular? Not necessarily. So, AJ, yeah. what are you looking for from the Tar Heels this week? Because for me, I think Carolina these look, for the most part, good offense. I think – I've said it a few times. I think Carolina, when they're on and playing like they can, I think they can score with just about anybody in the country. The problem is, is they can't defend. And that's something we've harped on a lot. Defense has been bad this year, make no make mistakes about it. I think it really culminated in that performance at Tennessee – 
Um, but it's just been something that hasn't gotten any better so far this year. But with that week off, what are you looking for the most from a journalistic perspective on how you're looking to judge this team this week? What are you looking to see them improve on? Well, I think they need to get better offensively because I don't know if they're ever going to be a great defensive team. So they're going to have to be they really to be good really. offensively. Yeah. And if you're relying on shooting the ball from 15 feet out and more on a nightly basis, you're just going to have off nights. You're not going to win. Yeah, you can't. Uh, they need to use the interior. They need to run through the stuff to the post more than they have. And when you, you go back to Asheville, you go back to Purdue, Tennessee, and the first 30 minutes against Asheville, I tweeted at the midpoint of the second half that in the previous 110 minutes of basketball, North Carolina had 62 points in the paint. Got to be better than that. And then now around the time Armando ran off like nine straight points. Armando is their best player. Armando is their bread and butter. They need to go through Armando, which I think is going to be a huge challenge Tuesday night. Armando has put up really good numbers against teams that don't really have much of a post presence. They go up against Purdue he gets in foul trouble. Part of it's because of the post presence mm-hmm. and he had two points. So Hunter Dickinson is better than the guys that Purdue has. Oh yeah. Hunter Dickinson's a guy that Carolina was interested in. He's a math kid up there in DC area and he, he could be phenomenal. Now he's hasn't been great yet. He had 27 in the opener. And ever since then, he's averaging about 12 points a game. He had 20 total in the last two games. So they probably have some issues getting him the ball. Like, I think one of the issues Carolina has is not getting the ball in the post enough. And part of it is because they're kind of playing, you know, musical point guards there with RJ and Caleb. I'm a believer that you got to, you got to determine who your point guard is, give him the keys and let the team grow around him Mm -hmm. as the point guard become in sync that way. So maybe we'll see more of that. Uh, Georgia tech, Georgia Tech could be dangerous down there because Carolina has gone down there and not just not played well at times. Not been ready. Lot, yeah. It's not a great, you know, it's not the thriller dome of the 80s and 90s. Unfortunately, it used to be a phenomenal atmosphere. It kind of stinks now. It's a weird lighting in that building. It's just, uh, you know, the, it's just kind of an odd place. Weird, yeah. And they don't play well there usually. Georgia Tech, they lost at home in their opener to Miami of Ohio, which isn't a terrible program. It's a MAC program that has some culture. They've won there before. They got a really nice win at Georgia. We don't really know yet what Georgia is, but I would say if you're Georgia Tech, that's a pretty good win. Yeah. And then they struggled the other day against Georgia Southern. Again, they trailed for a lot of, but they found a way to win. They got a couple guys in DeVoe, and I'm drawing a blank with the other one, uh, Jordan Usher, mm-hmm. uh, who who were a big part of last year's team that yeah, shocked everybody. And they're really good players, but they don't get a lot of scoring uh, from outside of those two. Uh, I think they'll defend. I mean, Carolina has to go in there and play well. They have to play smart offensively. If they play well offensively, they'll win that game. Yeah, no they can outscore Georgia Tech. But it's a good test to have another true road game. It's a good week to pick up a couple of, uh, of wins that they could, at this point in time, on paper, we look at them and say, okay, based on what we've seen, they can lose both these games. But they can come out 6-2, and two, get a non-conference win that's going to help them. Michigan isn't going to turn in a 13-17 and 17 season. That win's going to help them. They can win that game. Get it, get it starting out 1-0 and and on the road in the ACC, huge for this club. Because if they don't, I could see – I, I kind of sensed a little tightening already. And, gosh, if they don't have some success, they're going to tighten even more. Oh, yeah. And I think you're everybody's better when they're loose. Uh-huh. So you need a couple wins, get loose. You know, it would be good for Carolina to see Dawson Garcia find a comfort zone at some point here pretty soon. It's been six games. He's had one big game, but – he just kind of looks like he's still feeling his way around with the whole comfort thing. Um, I don't know what Hubert's going to do with the bench. If Styles and Dunn can't get in against Asheville in the first half, then I don't know at what point they could be counted on. We haven't had a lot of access to Hubert to ask a lot of these questions and hope, and we will get him the day before the Michigan game. So maybe, and that's the thing about Zoom, too. People need to understand. We get one question, sometimes maybe two. Yeah, it's not the it, same. It, in, in, in the pre, yeah, I mean, Jacob, you know, because you've been there a lot. In pre-COVID times, we could just sit there and almost have like a dialogue of sorts. More personal, where, yeah, yeah. More personal. It's more personal, but someone asks a question, and we could go down that trail for a while. But in Zoom, if your hand's up and you're next, and you want to ask mm-hmm. about chocolate ice cream, and everyone was talking about strawberry cake, the conversation shifts from strawberry cake to chocolate ice cream. Yeah, it's moderated. It's not free. In person, 
you know, that guy doesn't blurt out that question right away. Maybe you let that topic play itself through, work itself through. We don't get that on Zoom. And that's one of the things that, that is missed big time in media right now. And people say, why don't you ask this question or that question? Well, it's really challenging in a Zoom situation. There's you some- You might only get like, one. You usually only get one. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you're, you're not going to text some guy you don't know and say, hey, Charlie, instead of asking the question you were, why don't you ask about that so yeah. we can harp? It doesn't work that way. Yeah, so. But we'll find out and we'll know. And I think that the, the questions about use of the bench, not playing Justin McCoy against Tennessee, those are things people want to know about. We do too. And he was asked about Justin McCoy by, I think, uh, Adam Smith or C.L. Brown after the, the Tennessee game. And basically it was more, was he sick? Because Leakey was sick the day before. Hubert said, nope. That's it. That's all yeah. we got about that. So yeah, we're still operating from a different point in the media when we when we can't drill a few more questions in there so hopefully we get a little more access to find out some of these answers because we want to give the answers to the people who want to know yeah it's just different it's so different being over zoom i can't stress that enough i can definitely vouch for that from from what it's just it's not as it's so much better in person it's more personable it's just you can kind of feed off context clues you can feed off you can see actual people face to face you know not to mention we don't have to raise our hand to ask a question you just ask the question that's why you're able to kind of go down certain holes and, and get more. That's air. the way it was in post game in Charleston. And then the two games in Connecticut. And, and, and no coincidence that I think there were five of us. In the, <laughs> there were five of us that covered North Carolina in the media that were there, which is great. I mean, there last year, it's just Greg and me a lot of the time. Every once in a while, CL traveled. Um, Brennan didn't travel at all. Cause the athletic wouldn't send anybody on the road last year because of COVID. Uh, and in pre COVID, there would be, you know, two, three of us, sometimes four, I think it's great. There are five, and we're able to get a lot of questions in. So I got a lot out of the postgame pressers uh, from Charleston, Purdue, and Tennessee, but they're short. Yeah. So it's not like Mac. Mac will sit there and take your questions for a week. Yeah, for yeah, for. And his sure. opening statement is longer than Hubert's pressers and postgame, and I get that. That's that so that's why that's why Tuesdays can be really important because we get Hubert in a non post game situation, they don't have to rush them out right away. We'll get a little bit more time so we can get some more of these answers. And I look forward to that. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah. Big week coming up for the Tar Heels. Um, we'll, we'll see how they do. I think big opportunities for them to take some, get some good wins. Not only non-conference, it'll help their resume and, and down the. And show improvement. Uh, exactly. And show improvement. Show improvement, build off kind of some good things they've done and improve on some of the things that they've really struggled with so far this season but yeah great opportunity to get a big non-conference win and to start off the ACC on the right foot down in Atlanta which is always important it's always good to get that first win under your belt I know it doesn't define your ACC slate we've seen Carolina lose games early start at 0-2 and, and win national championships and you know so yeah. I think this is a different group I think this is a different group I think these guys need to win yeah I think they need to win I think they need that confidence and I think going yeah. in to next week at six and two got a little bit better of a taste in your mouth than maybe sitting at five and three or, you know, four and four worst case scenario. So we'll, we'll see how the Tar Heels do this week. Uh, big games, like I said, Wednesday night, 9.15 p.m. tip off in Chapel Hill late night. I think uh, per, I tweeted a couple weeks ago, 9 p.m. game should be banned. It should be ban, banned from the Guaranteed. Facebook. See, we have we can't stay at the arena and finish our work. We have to leave like 90, uh, two hours after the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so then I have to drive home. I live 32 miles from Chapel Hill. So Saturday night or Tuesday, Wednesday night, Thursday morning, guaranteed bedtime, 6 a.m. Oh, if that, right? <laughs> 6 a.m. And, and it's not that game will not start at 9 15. That game will start more like 9 30. They never start on time for some reason. So yeah, that, that's gonna be a late night. That game will be over till midnight and plenty of stuff to do after that one. So yeah, and then trip to Atlanta, Georgia Tech. Sunday afternoon game. That's a little bit better for you, I guess, AJ, besides the fact Yeah, but but when Atlanta. I'm in the press room is when the bowl announcement's going to come out. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, so not like you can have like a one day for this and one day for that. It's like one day for this, and then we're going to throw something in right beside people it. Don't wanna, people don't want to hear us complain. I've been told that. Stop complaining on your podcast. <laughs> hey, give them a little insight. You know what I mean? It's, it, like I That's said, more – See, I'm with you. That's more what it is because people want it. It's fascinating. When we like we bring in Brandon and Noah interns, and and Brandon had a more normal experience at Charleston because he got go in the press room. We got Kurt went outside the locker room. We're not totally in the locker room yet, but we got a lot closer. Baby <clears throat> and he's and he's fascinated. Yeah, he's like I never knew it was like this before. Completely. So different. people do like to ask, but they don't want to hear us complain. 
No, no, definitely not. I'm, I'm, I'm just plugging that in there so I can plug the promo real quick. Just letting you guys know how hard AJ works over there so I can make, make you guys go sign up for 2021. One-year premium subscription. Do it by Friday. I mean, it's less than a candy bar. I'm like, you can buy my man AJ a, a candy bar uh, every month. Which you do. The whole price of a year, you could order. My wife, um, and I was – I was in Connecticut. I think she and Ellie, my daughter, ordered pizza or something like that. I'm like, what, what do you got? Like $46 on your phone? You go to two, <laughs> two not pizzas. Cheap, man. <laughs> Pizza's 20 something dollars a pizza. I haven't ordered a pizza in years. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's like the price of a pizza with a couple of toppings and boom, yeah. you get that for a year. Yeah. Just get That's you, what I'm saying. And you don't feel as much like crap physically after after reading our site as you do after eating a, some exactly. cheap delivered pizza. Exactly. Exactly. Great. Go sign up for that link in the description below. 2021, man. It doesn't get any better than that. Like I said, a candy bar a month. You, you can give us that for all the work we put in. Be much appreciated. And you get access to just a ton of content you can't get unless you're signed up. Premium uh, message. I got to pay Gerard Hardy, man. Come on. Yeah, come on, guys. You got to gotta show us a little love. You got you to gotta put a little money in our pocket. So sign up. Link in the description below. Like I said, candy bar a month. Just think of it like that. And to me, it's a no-brainer for all the coverage you get over here at Tar Hill Illustrated. Dot com. That's enough of the plugs, though, AJ. Going to go ahead and wrap this one up, man. I've been Jacob Turner. He's been Andrew Jones. Make sure you keep it locked to TarHillIllustrated.com this week in particular. Basketball, football, a ton of stuff going on this week. So for all your pregame, postgame, in-game coverage, make sure you keep it locked to TarHillIllustrated.com and our website and our YouTube channel, Tar Heel Illustrated. Like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you know every single time we upload, and we upload a ton this time of year in particular. We'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks. Thanks.